this is what I think that this template looks like. Now, I, by the way, didn't do this because I'm conscious that so many people were familiar with the game. Um, after explaining the rules and the purpose of the game, the teacher demonstrates the game to the class. Now, um, this, by the way, you do the, the number practice first, and this is now a template for how you might use a game. So you play the game and demonstrate it. One of the things that we don't quite formalise enough of in mathematics teaching is what they call, I think, in literacy, modelling. So you actually you know, model the process that you're wanting the kids to use. And so we'd actually play the game in a modelling sense uh, to do this. Um, I, by the way, I just gave the PowerPoint to Lena on a memory stick and she's going to take it put it on the, the web straight away. Okay. Students engage in the game for a short while, after which there's a teacher-led discussion of the strategies or mathematical point. Now, again, we sort of skipped that because I was conscious that people uh, were, familiar with, were familiar with that. The students are offered further opportunity to engage. The teacher or the students can suggest variations such as making the game more challenging for some or less complex for others. And then at the end, the teacher leads a discussion of the strategies of the game. Specific problems can be posed that allow practice to focus on the mathematical point or extend their thinking. And can you see that the reason that I've got that there is because very often people play a game, but it's just the game. But we're not playing the game for the game. We're playing the game because it teaches you how to do complicated maths questions. And so if you'd played just those two games we played, you'd be able to answer that year nine question, pretty much. And finally, the teacher summarises the main ideas. The teacher has an active role to find commonalities, patterns, principles that can form the basis of the formalisation of the intuitive insights development during engagement of the game. So I'm just going to go back and show you because the, there was five steps in this, in this plan. Okay. So there's modelling of the game, preliminary experience with the game followed by discussion, Extended experience with the game, um, in, including differentiation for the kids who need it. Uh, discussion of the formalities of the game and what it learnt and even practice of the maths that comes from it and the summary of the main point. So it becomes, if you like, a template and it wouldn't matter what game you had, you can follow that template uh, in order to do that. Does anyone make any comments or ask any questions about that template? Okay. I'm going to go on now to do the next template. Now, this one's called Active Teaching. Um, that one was called Purposeful Games. This one's called Active Teaching. Um, just to show you this, and again, I think people will be familiar with the empty number lines. Suppose we have to add 37 plus 45. Um, now, this, by the way, is why I really need to learn to use these whiteboards properly, but suppose we had to use 37 plus 45. There's actually, in terms of addition, there's two completely different ways to add. One's called splitting. And with the splitting one, this is the one you normally do, that you would say, well, I'm going to add the 5 and the 7, and that's going to give me 12. And then, then I'm going to add the 40 and the 30, and so that's going to be 70 plus the 12 is 82. And so that's called splitting. Now, there's also a possible uh, to do it by another method called building. And that's what, this is what building does. So building with an empty number line. So if you start at 37 and you add 3, you get 40. Because 40 is easier to work with than 37. And then if you add 40, we get to 80. And then if you add two, we get to 82, because we needed two more, because we'd already used the three up. And so it's just a way, a model that we can use, you know, for those kids who are visual in the way they do things and like to draw, it actually helps them to do it. But in any case, it helps you to understand the way the numbers work. Now, of course, you don't have to do it that way. You could do it 
you know, by adding 10, then 10, 57, 10 to 67, 10 to 70, 77, three more is 80, then two more is 82. So you can do it any way, any way you like, like that. It's a way of adding to do that. Now, the kids will have done that when they're in grade four or something, so that they'll be sick of it by the time they get to you. But could you use an empty number line to work out the answer to that question, please? 